Hello everyone, it's Mikhail and this time we dive into new Cinema 4D Art 2024. Uh, I'm gonna shed some lights on new Rigid Body Solver, which pretty amazing, it's very cool as uh, I think, you know. So uh, I will share with you similar technique which I used in my previous tutorials when I used some point distribution and use it for dynamics, but now we have this opportunity to use Rigid Body, it's pretty fast pretty strong I would say and it's not uh, just a granular simulation it's a real rigid body dynamics moreover uh, Cinema 4D has updated to viewport uh, with viewport performance so you got this power of Cinema 4D right now and Mograph as well so if you're up for it let's get started okay uh, to begin with let's create a just simple cloner with kind of I don't know uh, spheres you know Place it inside the cloner, change radius to maybe to 5, change segment to 12 maybe, and let me actually change uh, my cloner to instance mode, multi instance mode, I would say. Create kind of 20 by 20 by 20, we got this one, yeah. So, uh, as you know, we're gonna talk about. Uh, new dynamics in Cinema 4D, new uh, rigid body solver, I would say, which uh, right now in the unified system, you know, so we can uh, easily to use it with cloth dynamics, etc. etc. I think with clothes, with spiral, with uh, soft body. Yeah, so uh, as you see, I create cloner, create a plane, let me switch display color for plane to custom, just create a kind of gray one. No. And right click simulation rigid body. Uh, when you use a cloner, you can use a multi instance mode which allows you to uh, get more speed, much faster response from viewport. Moreover, new Cinema 4D R 2024 uh, had improved uh, viewport which. Uh, uh, pretty fast and you can uh, operate with many of clones or many of geometry and many of polygons that's this huge you know it's huge but it's pretty good pretty good so uh, and as you see we create this new rigid body tag you know and let me create for my plane simulation collider tag so if right now I press play actually let me increase Counter frames. If right now I press play, C4D uh, has to calculate it a bit, and we got this one pretty fast, pretty nice, as you see, pretty pretty good result. So, uh, but I want to share with you a bit more interesting maybe technique. Just uh, let me delete this sphere right now, deactivate all. And let me actually create a cube, you know, and use a kind of fracture object. Where is it? Of course, it's inside Mograph effect. So we got this one, yeah. And if we go to the fracture object, go to the uh, sorting, not sorting, detailing, maybe. Actually, let's go to the object and change offset fragment like that. Yeah, maybe just a two, not too much. And maybe go to the source and change this distribution from <coughs> distribution type uniform to, I don't know, uh, inverse normal, like that, you know, just to generate kind of uh, interesting looking shape. So just for now, press C to according to the polygons. Let me grab maybe a few stones here, you know, like that. Maybe not this one maybe this one okay i think few stones would be enough maybe three stones okay so let me actually select all of them place it here delete this fracture and i want to kind of remesh it you know but uh before i do that let me reset psr for each okay just to go to the position scale rotation reset psr and let's start from maybe first one I want to place that inside Volume Builder. Okay, go to the Volume Builder, change voxel size by 4 maybe, create smooth, a bit readjust smoothing like that, and let's create a volume measure, 
like this, press and B to show the polygons, you know, maybe go to the volume builder again, change voxel size by 2, just to get more detailed result like this, okay, as for me looks promising, yeah, and let me grab this two times, okay, delete this, and place our additional uh, fracture elements inside each. I do it in order to get more maybe interesting realistic result. Uh, make sure if you place it, uh, you place SDF smooth above the curb fracture for each. Okay, okay. So just to want to get more smooth result, more realistic result for each stone, maybe play around a bit with uh, smoothness, you know, uh, just to be on the safe side, kind of. Yeah, and after that we just can select all of them, press C to convert the polygon, let me rename each 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. Okay, we got this free instance. Let's place it inside. Actually, uh, let's place it inside cloner. Okay, maybe maybe we should remesh it right now, yeah? So uh, I think we can use remesh right now. Sorry for messy a bit, cause it's uh, tricky part, record tutorial, you know, uh, and um, remember every aspect of this tool. Let me remesh it by maybe 50%, kind of. Okay, we got really nice stones. Let me uh, press C to convert to, po to polygon object, place it inside cloner, activate it. And let me make sure about the size, right now it's pretty big, let me grab all of them, try to kind of uh, press NB to see the polygons, you know, to hide the polygons, create kind of this one maybe, something like that, okay, okay, we prepare our cloner, okay. So, first thing first, I want to a bit randomize it, use just a random, random effector, not in position mode, just in rotation mode i would say let me create sort of rotation for that okay so and let me use one more random effector for scale maybe i'm not sure if it's necessary maybe just in a bit you know to get more variation of our clone so as you see we got this uh we got this kind of initial state of object you know so we can move forward with it uh and but before we jump to dynamics and press play again i want to uh focus on some uh, parameters you know some attributes on new rigid body dynamics first of all we should go to the uh collision and by default collision shape it's auto i would prefer use um, canvas hull you know if you press pre uh, ctrl d go to the simulations and <coughs> Activate with draw, uh, draw uh, options. You can easily see here rigid body uh, uh, centers and rigid body shapes. Let's activate rigid body shape. Move forward to one frame to get this one. I'm not sure if it is well. Yeah, we got this one. As for me, it uh, looks promising. Let's deactivate it. Move back. Okay. And uh, uh, let's try to uh, run our simulation. In the first frame, it's calculate some uh, previous time. As you see, we got pretty nice falling down uh, um, dynamic rocks, dynamic stones, I would say. So, uh, uh, so far, so good. Um, maybe we should go to the collider tag for our plane and let me actually increase maybe frictions by two okay and let me grab my cloner and increase count here by 40 and here by 40 as well i hope it's okay for our case let me run simulation again it takes a time to calculate uh first frame i think let's waiting a bit because there are too much clones right now. Let me see how it works. Yeah, as you see, it's pretty responsive viewport. We have a lot of rigid bodies right now, yeah? So, uh, 
I would prefer create kind of additional forces inside my scene. So I just prefer to use simple turbulence. Let's increase uh, strength by 20, uh, scale by 150, I would say. Let me run simulation again and see how it affects uh, my uh, cloner, my uh, instances, uh, how it will look with new turbulence. Let's waiting a bit, it's calculating. Okay, as you see, we got some additional turbulence here. Yeah, pretty nice. It's a bit changed the shape. That's pretty good for me because I want to, because I want to create kind of initial state for that. So let's hold on for this. We got this kind of, I don't know, rubbles maybe. <laughs> yeah. So uh, for that, we can go to the uh, dynamic stack, you know, and can go to the dynamics and press this button initial state to uh, store this state for first frame. So if we right now go to the first frame, we immediately get this initial state. So right now we can maybe increase strength for turbulence by 50. Okay, and let me run simulation one more time. I want to achieve results similar like I am showing you in my teaser in my uh, preview for this tutorial. Yeah, as you see, we got some vector movement here and here. It, it still works pretty nice, pretty well. Moreover, I can maybe a bit optimize uh, my uh, my initial instances, because right now uh, they have pretty much polygons, maybe. Yeah, as you see, we keep this uh, shape here that because I think we have a uh, pretty big friction. Let me revert to original one, just a 0 0.2. Let me run my simulation one more time. Yeah, looks promising. Let's wait a bit just to check more frames before we cache it, you know, and switch to and jump to a uh, nice small graph stuff. As you see, it's pretty nice. We got this fluid emotion here and here. It, it adds and still works pretty well. Uh, and it's, it's rigid body. It's not a particle dynamics, you know. It's a real rigid body with our real dynamics with rotation, friction, and so on. So I think you got the idea. Yeah. So as for me, it looks promising. Uh, I'm ready to cache it. Let me pause it. Back to the frame one. Let me actually increase my plane just to be on the safe side, you know. Go to this uh, rigid body tag, go to the cache and calculate cache scene. Well, scene has cached, so let me run it. And as you see, we got pretty, pretty nice response in viewport. Maybe it's too turbulent, you know, not exactly the same like my teaser. I'm not sure what uh, happened when I have this freeze frame. I think that's back of my PC because uh, I run into this problem, you know, after I upgrade my graphic cards drivers but i think you got the idea how to create kind of this you know simulation with some uh some uh kind of uh stone simulation you know let me show you it's here take a look pretty nice yeah pretty nice so maybe so fast but <laughs> very nice result so what next? Uh, as we operate with MoGraph, we can easily to colorize it. Right now we can create just a plane effector, deactivate some position, let's call it color for instance, you know, go to the fields, create random field in color mode and change maybe scale to 1500. Let me maybe remap color as well, create a gradient like that, you know, a bit uh, readjust my colors here or just grab some color presets from content browser like that for instance you know so right now if I run my simulation take a look it's immediately uh, 
uh, applied for clones, we don't need any freeze modifiers to freeze it. You know, we can create kind of here, take a look, kind of fluid uh, motion. In case you use spheres, you can create this one, take a look, these curls stuff. And it's a rigid body, it's not a grains, you know, it's a rigid body, it's much complex simulation. And Cinema 4D create pretty nice result, yeah? So, I want to share with you a bit more, because uh, we can use shader field, for instance, instead of random, you know, just to go to the field, grab maybe some, I don't know, uh, texture here, uh, just to grab texture and apply it here. Uh, so uh, I think you got an idea. Yeah, and one more thing, as we operate with MoGraph stuff, we can use power of fields, for instance, we can create formula field in color mode as well, you know, and take a look how it works. Let me wait in a bit. Yeah, take a look, we got this dynamically change color and uh, you can create maybe sort of fluid effect, sort of, I don't know, uh, Mm, and interesting capture effect, I would say. So I think you got the general idea how to operate with it, how to create something interesting, you know. And uh, this new Cinema 4D. Uh, I think that's it. It's just a quick overview, maybe just uh, quick uh, tips and tricks how to use new Cinema 4D uh, rigid body. You can combine it with soft body and uh, with my uh previous tutorials when i shared with you how to create points and use it uh, like a, a dynamic subject to be a rope tech you know so uh it's just the first thing which i first type time try to touch it you know and i think there are a lot of possibilities to create pretty nice interesting simulations without third-party plugins without anything use just a uh, uh, native C4D tools and uh, powerful of MoGraph. So, I think that's it for this part of tutorial, you know. So, maybe I will create something uh, more in this field, you know. But uh, for now, that's it. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me and ask your questions, you know, direct in Patreon or leave a comment below. Uh, I think that's it. Uh, thank you for your time. See you very soon on next tutorials. Bye-bye.